Hey guys, how are you? This video is called New Testament versus Old Testament. And many Christians want to know what is the difference and what well, I got a new haircut, see? Uh, many people want to know what the difference is and how does it apply to our Christian life. Um, I was reading this the other day because the Lord uh, brought me to this uh, scripture and there are many confused, confused Christians about uh, their faith so and what God wants for them. First of all, you got to understand that God never changes. He is the same then, today, and He is the same in the future. And Jesus did not come to do away with the Old Testament. In fact, He came to add on to it. So, <coughs> in... Um, in the gospel, um, Jesus himself says, I have not come I have not come to do away with the law. And also um <clears throat> uh the Bible says that uh God is God has written the laws in our minds and in our heart. So what does that mean? Which laws? Obviously all the laws of the Torah, of the Old Testament. This is all Old Testament uh, scripture. <clears throat> but the the one thing, uh, the one scripture that I will be going into today is Hebrews 10. Which explains clearly why, why Jesus came. And this is the one a lot of people uh, misinterpret, which it says, The Torah is a shadow of the good things to come, but not the actual ma manifestations of the originals. This is Hebrew 10. Hebrew 10 verse 1. There, therefore, it can never by means of the same sacrifices repeatedly and end endlessly year after year bring to the goal those who approach the holy place to offer them. Otherwise, wouldn't the offering of those sacrifices have ceased? This is talking about uh, how they used to make animal sacrifices year after year. <laughs> and obviously, we don't do that anymore because of Jesus Christ. And uh, if, you, if you go further down to, it's to verse 5, it says, uh, this is why on, this is why on coming into the world, he says, this is what Jesus says, it has not been your will to have an animal sacrifices and a meal offering. Rather, you have prepared for me a body. No, you have not been pleased by burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then I said, look, in the scroll of the book, it is written about me. I have come to do your will. So God was not satisfied with, with animal offerings, animal sacrifices and meal offerings. That's how people uh, made uh, the offerings back then, and including um, the tithing. You know, they brought uh, they brought offerings from their fields. It was food offerings and animal offerings uh, to God. But it says uh, these things. It says were were not satisfying to God. It says, you have not been pleased, and verse 6, with burnt offerings and sin offerings. So, Jesus needed to come to satisfy that, that offering, to satisfy the ransom for our sins. It was, the, it was the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Look at verse, uh, let's keep reading. <clears throat> says uh, verse 8 in saying first you neither will nor were pleased with animal sacrifices meal offerings burnt offerings and sin offerings uh, mind you if you go go back to the Torah first five uh, books of the Bible 
there were so many different t types of offerings for your sins. It was unbelievable. It was like, it was insane how much stuff you had to do. Jesus, he came to do away with that. He's, you can clearly read that. He says it himself. He came to do away with with the with the offerings of animals and meals offering. <clears throat> then he says, um, Jesus says, I come to do your will, verse 9. He takes away the first system in order to set up the second system. Second system is receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It is in connection with this will that we have been separated for God and made holy. Because of Jesus, you are made holy. Once and for all, through the offering Yeshua, the Messiah's body. Because of the, 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 the slaughtering of his own son's body, you are made whole, holy. And you are worthy uh, because of him. Now verse 11, it says, Now every Kohen stands every day doing his service. I'm, by the way, I'm reading from the Jewish Bible. Offering over offering the same, act of, the sa same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Those those other sacrifices couldn't take away couldn't take away your sins, but this one, after he had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, sat down at the right hand of God, from then on to wait until his enemies be made footstools for his feet, for by a single offering he has brought to the to the goal for all time those who are being set apart for God and made holy. See the old sacrifices. That's how things were done, but now there's a new system, which is Yeshua Jesus. <laughs> And the Ruach, and the Ruach Hakodesh, too, bears witness to us. For after saying, "This is the covenant which I will make with them those days," says Adonai, "I will put my Torah on their hearts and write the, write it on their mind." So the commandment, the Torah, is not. This is so powerful, people. Um, the Torah is in your heart now. He, put, oh my. You can't do away with the Torah. The Ten Commandments is the Torah, people. You can't do away with it. That's the, look what it says right here in, in uh, Hebrews uh, verse 16. I will put my Torah in their heart and write in, in their mind. What do you, why do you think when you sin against God, you feel so selfish, uh, so um, guilty? I'm sorry. Because the, the, Ruach, the Ruach HaKadosh is... He uh, he convicts you right there on the spot when you could, when you when you sin against God, cause he cause the the Torah is in your heart and in your mind. It says this, verse seventeen, and their sin and their wickedness I will remember no more. Because of Yeshua Christ. It says um. It says uh, 22, verse 22 says, let, Therefore let us approach the holiest place with a sincere heart, in full assurance that come with trusting, with our, with, with our hearts sprinkled clean, Did I skip something? <clears throat> with our hearts sprinkled clean, from a bad conscience and our body washed with pure water, let us continue holding fast to hope, to acknowledge without wavering, for, for the one who made the promise is trustworthy, and let us keep, Paying attention to one another in order to spur each other on to love and good deeds. Not neglecting our own con congregational meeting, as some have made a practice of doing, but rather encouraging each other. Congregational meetings at church, church is also important. You should make it a habit to go to church and gather. Uh... Then it says, uh, God says again in verse 30, vengeance belongs to him. And Adonai will judge his people. Then uh, Yeshua wants you to remember uh, verse 38. There is so little time, the one coming will indeed come. He will not delay, but the person who is righteous will live his life by trusting, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. Faith is so important. Uh, I didn't want. I wasn't going to cover that, but 
obviously uh, Yeshua wants you guys to remember that there's so so little time verse 38 but you saw here folks uh, I don't know what version you have but it says here uh, verse 16 that Adonai put his Torah in your heart do you think that the Torah is not important anymore it says it right there he put the Torah in your heart it's not written in stones anymore it's in your heart the Torah convicts you. The Holy Spirit uh, convicts you. So, the Old Testament is still important. The old laws are still important. And Jesus came to just add, and he he goes on to say, "Love your your enemies and." Uh, Forgive seven times seventy seven. The whole gospel is about love. Love and forgiveness. If you walk, Galatians says, if you walk in love, that you're not bound by the laws. Why? Because when you love God and you love his ways, you you walk in his ways. Because you love him. You see that? If you love doing something, then how does the law apply to you? If you are constantly walking in the law. You understand? If you walk, if you love God so much that you live by the law because you love God, then the law doesn't apply to you because because you love God so much. But if you if you don't live your life by God's ordinances, then you're going to be judged by the law. You understand that? We have to humble ourselves. We have to be obedient to God. The Torah. I don't know what versions people have. But clearly. The Hebrew. Uh, Bible. The Jewish Bible that I have here. Clearly states. Put the Torah. God put the Torah in your heart. And. God didn't come to do away with the law. Jesus Christ didn't come away to do away with the law. He didn't come away. He didn't come to do away with the Sabbath. He didn't come away to. Nowhere does nowhere in the Bible does Jesus say that he did away with the Sabbath. That's one of the whole, most holiest days. God rested on that day. God the Father rested on the seventh day. Do you think God the Father needs to rest? On the seventh day, he is he is all consuming fire. He is he is the epitome of life and energy. He showed us, he he humble God the Father humbled himself to show us how to live. He said, "Look, this is how you guys need to do it. You you need to take a break. If you you're gonna burn yourself out." This is one fluent, this is one smooth flowing book from beginning to end. It's non-contradictory. It does not contradict itself. Okay? Uh, well, I hope uh, this, uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that um, your word is a light unto our feet and to guide onto our mind and uh, it's a light where there is uh, no light thank you Papa God uh, thank you for all of brothers and sisters out there who are who are uh, making attempts uh, and who are attempting to change their lives 
to live uh, righteous and obedient lives to you, for Papa God. Uh, Papa God, give us strength to continue to, to try to please you, to please you, and to um, follow your ordinances, Papa God. Thank you, Papa God. Thank you for your son, Yeshua. Thank you for teaching us uh, your word each and every day. Thank you for your love and your mercies. In the name of your son, Yeshua Jesus, amen.